Yeah, it looks warm right now with all these tropical plants in the background. Actually, I don't know if they're tropical, but they look tropical. Anyways, it's not warm. The Wendigo. What the hell is it? And can we trust a video game that's meant to scare us and make us tense to accurately portray mythology? Yeah, we kind of can. They actually did a pretty good job of incorporating true facts, facts from Native American mythology. The myth of the Wendigo has been around forever. I mean. Most accounts say that it's been around since, like, before Native Americans were Native Americans. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, it's part of multiple different um, tribes, beliefs, and therefore it has a lot of different names, which includes Wendigo, Windigo, Wichico, Witco and Witiko, <clears throat> and they all pretty much stem from the word meaning hermit or someone that lives by themselves, which we see in Until Dawn. Um, they mostly hang out in the mine, which, I mean, they're already on a secluded mountain, but the mine's condemned, so, you know, you can be pretty sure no one's going to be down there, <clears throat> except the flamethrower dude, whose name we never get. So we're going to be calling him the Stranger. So obviously if they're called for hermits or, you know, named after being solitary creatures, they don't live in like packs or communities. Um, and overall that's kind of hard to see other than the fact that they live in the mine because the Stranger's been trapping them in the sanatorium and keeping them all together. But according to the typical myth, they wouldn't stand for that. And they don't. They're always angry, so you can't really tell. <laughs> but um, a big part of it, as you can see near the end, when they're all in the lodge together and all the Wendigos break in, uh, the Wendigo of Hannah fights the other two guy Wendigos and kills them. So, obviously they don't like being around other Wendigos, they like being alone. Another part of the mythology that says they um, will attack each other if they see other Wendigos says they decapitate them, which um, Hannah does. As I've said, there's many different Wendigo myths throughout different Native American tribes um, that are mostly in the northern part of North America, like Canada, and some northern parts of the U.S. Like, I think Minnesota is the state with the most account of Wendigo sightings or whatever. But um, in the game, where are they? They are in Canada, and specifically Alberta. Um, we see that. I think the only place that I realized that they were in Canada was when they showed the um, package of fake newspapers and it had the address label on it for the printing company and it said Alberta, so they're in Canada. Um, and the stranger's notes say that the myth they're basing their thing off is from the Cree Native Americans, which were in Alberta. so. That much is accurate. <laughs> There's actually, actually yeah, different types of one too. Um, the original one is a really like giant monster who's really loud and 
was said to create winds like whirlwinds and tornadoes and storms and blizzards. It was basically a um, explanation for natural phenomenon. Um, but yeah, it was huge. It was bigger than trees. It was said to rip up trees as it walked by and would occasionally use them as like walking sticks. But like high winds were always a sign of its presence and it would howl or scream or whatever and it would sound like strong blowing winds, which we see in the game. It would um, mostly strike in winter when it was cold and snowing and you know, winds and ice storms and people would be desperate for food because it's winter and you know things don't really grow in winter especially all the way up north in Canada. I don't know. I don't know much about Canada. Um, but yes, apparently in times of strife and hunger and starvation people would become so desperate that they would cannibalize each other. And that was supposed to be the Wendigo's fault. There was a guy across the lake looking at me. Anyways. <laughs> um. And this is where we get to the humans turning Wendigo, which is what happens in Until Dawn. So the part's accurate. Um. There's so many different ways one can go Wendigo or turn into a Wendigo. There's the simple, if you cannibalize other people, you start turning, which is what they show in the game. And that is accurate to the myth. And you could also just, like if you just simply say the name, I guess it's kind of like Voldemort, and that if you say its name, it will know and it will come find you. So I'm screwed. Um, but even like having thoughts of cannibalism or doing something that wasn't like moral within the tribe, like if you plotted to murder one of your tribesmen. Wendigo's coming for you. <laughs> and um, also, this one was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> well, not ridiculous, but it's kind of crazy how like it encompasses everything and the Wendigo can come and get you. But um, in the tribes, I think it specifically said Cree tribes, which is what they use in the Until Dawn, young men would go on a um, vision quest in order to become a man. And if they encountered the Wendigo in their vision quest, they would become one. And also, an innocent person can just be asleep and dreaming, not specifically in a vision quest, just, you know, normal dreaming at night. And if they dream of a Wendigo, bam, you start becoming one. Um, a big part of the myth, even with the humans turning Wendigo, not just with the actual monster that's not human, um, is that it has a frozen heart, and the only way to destroy it is to melt the heart with fire. And in the game we see that the stranger uses fire to destroy them. And if there was a human turning one to go, and it was in the early stages, you would tie them up and like put them over a fire, which doesn't make sense because then they would die. So we could just heat them up, <laughs> put them by the fire, get them warm, so it melts the heart. And that would fight off the evil spirits. In the game, it says that their skin's too tough to be pierced by anything. Um, which, in the original mythology, yeah, they were really tough and pretty much immune to everything except melting. But it also said in some cases, like, of really strong heroes and warriors, 
you could decapitate them. So, I guess that part of the game's kind of right, but also wrong. But the biggest flaw is that um, in original mythology, to kill the Wendigo, you would burn them. Or you'd melt the heart, and then you'd burn the corpse after the heart was melted. And that's what you're supposed to do in every case. You were supposed to kill them. And in the game, it says you can't kill them because it releases their spirit. Which, it never really tells us what happens once the spirit's released in the game. But in the Stranger's Journal, it's very clear you do not kill them unless it's a last resort. Because you will release the spirit and that's bad. But no, in the original myth, you killed them. Nothing about the spirit being released and wrecking havoc all over the place. You would burn them, melt the heart, and then burn them to completely destroy them. So what does this thing look like? Well, no one's really sure. Especially since there's so many different Wendigo myths over pretty much all of North America. So, there's a lot of different interpretations of what they look like, so I can't really say whether Until Dawn is right on their portrayal. But, if you take into account that they're supposed to derive from being starving, their Wendigos in Until Dawn are really emaciated, so... Yeah. <laughs> and, um... In the mythological accounts of humans turning into Wendigos, um, they pretty much say they become disfigured and kind of distorted, which in Until Dong they pretty much do that. They stretch out and become all weird and elongated, and they're pretty much not proportionate to normal humans anymore. And also in the myths, it says their eyes turn yellow, I believe, and they become like owl-like. Which in the game, like, they're not yellow, but they are really big and, you know, kind of owl-like. But, um, in the game they have that thing where they can only see movement, which I couldn't find anywhere in mythology. <laughs> which, it might be out there somewhere, like I said, there's countless myths of Wendigo. Um, also the teeth are pretty accurate. They have super pointy teeth to eat flesh. <laughs> and, um... Do they have lips in the game? I don't think so. It's hurt something here. <laughs> but since they're so hungry for flesh, they eat their own lips. Because their hunger is insatiable. Speaking of insatiable hunger, in the game, the Wendigos are like storing the bodies, like with Mike and... No, not Mike. Matt. <laughs> when Matt dies, it, um, I think it was Hannah. Anyways, the Wendigo that kills him puts him on the hook and just leaves him there. <clears throat> and then later in the game with Sam and Mike, when they're walking through the mines, they run into um, the like room full of bodies where you can see the stranger's body hanging from the um, ceiling. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of heads and stuff. But it, that didn't really make sense with the myth because their hunger is insatiable and they constantly want to feed. So why would they keep bodies around and not eat them right away. That didn't sit well with me. And I mean, even the wolf. I mean, its organs were gone, but it still had a lot of meat left on its body. Wendigar also said to have superhuman strength, whether that's the monster or the turned human. And we definitely see that in the game. I mean, the Wendigo just effortlessly drags off bodies, whether it's that huge stag in the beginning, or Jess, who's actually pretty tiny, so, but I mean, it pulls her through the doorway pretty effortlessly. You gotta be pretty strong to do that. Also, Wendigos have super sharp claws, and they're supposed to be like a foot long in the game, they're not. They're like that. <laughs> but they are very sharp. They're sharp enough that they tear up um, the stag and Jess. 
And then the strangers actually completely decapitated just by like a simple swipe of its claws. <sighs> What's another one? Oh, the fire tower. Um, the thing that cuts the, you know, the, the cords on the fire tower they are holding it up before it falls down. It's not Josh, because he doesn't actually want to kill them, and it's not the stranger, because he doesn't want to hurt anyone. So it's definitely Wendigo, and you can see, if you pause it right, that it's like an arm swiping. So in a simple swipe... Oh god. <coughs> the Wendigo just snaps a really heavy-duty, probably metal, cord. I would say Until Dawn's portrayal of the Wendigo is pretty accurate to mythology from what you can find. I mean, there's tons of different myths, and of course it was all oral tradition, so not everything is recorded. But they get they have the location right. Canada. <laughs> they have the Native Americans, correct? The Cree. Um, they've got the name right. There's tons of different names. They have the fact that it's a hermit, right? Because they don't live together, and when they see each other, they want to kill each other. They also have the whole icy, like, just overall being pretty much correct, and the whole howling winds are definitely present in the game. I'm sorry for my shitty camera skills right now. My phone's dying, so I had to plug it in. <laughs> But, what else is accurate? The way they have a human turning Wendigo is accurate. I mean, there's tons of different ways, as I said, but the one they use is um, if you eat human flesh, you become one. And that's how I think they're all turned, because they're not turned by infectious bites, as the stranger says. I think all of them were the miners that they turned in the hospital through the experiments. And Hannah, who definitely resulted to eating her sister's corpse, which they don't outright say, but you know that's what happened. And the two, I think it's just two biggest things that they didn't get right are that I don't think it would store food because it's supposed to have insatiable hunger. And it's um, supposed to be killed. You're supposed to melt the heart and then burn the body and completely destroy and kill it. Whereas in the game, you're not supposed to, supposed to. The stranger says not to kill them because you release the souls. But I couldn't find anything of that. So overall, they do a pretty good job of portraying the Wendigo.